It is estimated most human beings only use 10% of the brain's capacity. Imagine if we could access 100%. Interesting things begin to happen. Yes? Professor Norman, my name is Lucy. I just read all your research on the human brain. It's a little rudimentary, but you're on the right track. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. So I saw Lucy this last weekend. Latest film from writer-director Luc Besson. And I'm not entirely sure what to think about this one. It, um... There was some stuff I liked, some stuff I didn't like. It, it was a movie. It's a... A very weird movie, especially towards the end. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, the... The story for this movie is Lucy, played by Scarlett Johansson, is a student who is in Taipei for some kind of study abroad program, or maybe she's just there on vacation. I don't know. It, it doesn't really explain why she's there. She's just there. And, yeah, it doesn't matter for the plot. She's, she's in Taipei. And while she's there, she meets this douchebag at a nightclub and falls for the guy, despite him being an obvious douchebag. And the next day, he somehow coerces her into making a delivery for him to this Korean mob boss, Mr. Jang, who is played by, uh, what's his name, Min Sik Che. And while she makes this delivery, the douchebag immediately gets killed off. And thank God, because I was worried for a minute that we would actually have to put up with this guy for the whole movie. But there seems to be a trend nowadays where douchebag characters will be introduced and then immediately killed off. It, it happened with Transformers 4. <laughs> so, you, know, you know what? If this is a trend, I am okay with this. Fine. Bring in the douchebag long enough to advance the plot and then get rid of him. Go for it. I will take it. So anyway, he gets killed off. She gets captured. And turns out this briefcase that she was delivering contains some samples of this new designer drug that they're trying to introduce to the market, which they call CPH4. And they plan to introduce it to various countries in Europe and also the United States by taking Lucy, as well as three other victims, and surgically implanting the pouch that contains the drugs into their abdomen, and then sending them back to their home countries, where they will be picked up by the local chapter of this Korean mob, and the drugs will be removed, and they'll be sent on their way. Sounds all well and good, except that night, while Lucy is being held in a cell somewhere, waiting for her flight, the guard starts getting a little frisky with her, and she doesn't take kindly to this, and bites the guy, and he responds by kicking her in the gut. One would think they would have told their guards, hey, by the way, the merchandise is actually inside their bodies, so treat them with care. Apparently he didn't get the memo, but yeah, the, the pouch ruptures and the stuff starts leaking into her system, and that's when all kinds of crazy shit starts happening. Because as I'm sure you're all aware, the premise behind this movie, which is complete bullshit, but... We'll go with it for now. The premise is that humans only use about 10% of their brains. And imagine what we could do if we could unlock the brain's full potential. Why, we could gain complete control of our bodies. We increase the power even more, we can gain control of other people and other objects, become telepathic and telekinetic and whatnot. Basically, we become X-Men. And that's what starts happening to Lucy. The very first thing she does as she as the drugs start leaking into her system, in a pretty cool-looking scene, she starts climbing up the walls and the ceiling as if gravity no longer has any effect. And it, it is actually a pretty cool moment. Her newfound powers apparently also make her an expert marksman, so she swipes a gun from one of the guards and mows them all down effortlessly, gets the hell out of there, and then spends the next chunk of the movie trying to do two things. One, she, uh, somehow using her newfound psychic powers, figures out where all three of these other guys are going. Um, going to Rome, Berlin, and Paris. How convenient that they're all three easily recognizable cities in Europe. But anyway, she contacts this police officer in Paris, played by Amir Waqid, and has him 
work out the details with the Italians and the Germans to nab the other two guys. I don't know why she didn't just contact someone in all three cities, but whatever. And then she heads to Paris, where all three of these uh, victims are eventually apprehended and taken to. Again, I don't know why the local police aren't handling each individual victim and they're all brought to Paris, but whatever. And it also happens that this uh, brilliant neurologist named Professor Norman, played by Morgan Freeman, is giving a conference in Paris. How convenient that everything just happens to be going on in Paris. And Lucy is seeking this guy out because she thinks he might be able to help her figure out exactly what is going on with her brain, and hopefully she can figure out what to do about it before it's too late, because... The human body clearly was not designed to handle all of this, and she figures if this keeps going on for too long, it's just going to kill her off, and she'll probably die within about 24 hours. And then it gets weird. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the final act too much because I don't want to get into spoilers, but... Uh, yeah, I don't even know what the hell really happened there. It was like a mix between The Matrix and 2001 and Jurassic Park. Uh, it's, it, it's weird. If you saw the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Whoa. So yeah, that's the basic story there. Uh, now, let's just get all the stupid stuff out of the way first. The premise is complete bullshit. For what it's worth, Luc Besson claims he knew that going into the movie, but he decided to do it anyway because, fuck it, it's a movie, whatever, I do what I want. And also it's some kind of metaphor because that apparently makes it okay. Yes, as long as it's a metaphor, it ceases to be stupid. No, no it doesn't. Uh, yeah, they, they also claim that this uh, designer drug, CPH4, is something that pregnant women naturally produce in the sixth week of pregnancy, which is also not true. Uh, although Besson claimed in an interview that he based it on an actual chemical that is produced in the sixth week of pregnancy, but he didn't want to use its real name. I don't know why, as if changing the name makes it any more plausible. I I'm sure for some reason it made sense to him. He is, after all, only using 10% of his brain, so, you know, it's... <laughs> for those of us who are using the entire brain, yeah, it's kind of stupid. And I'm not sure how these uh, Korean mafia guys never figured out that this was a side effect of this brand new drug. Uh, somehow, during their testing and development of this drug, that just never came up. Seems a bit unlikely. One would think they would have encountered this before. Don't know. Uh, also, man, people in Taipei are oblivious to what's going on. Because there are moments where, like, initially, when Lucy escapes from the gangsters, her first thought is to get to a hospital and get this pouch out of her abdomen. And she goes there... Just not giving one fuck, carrying a pistol with the silencer right by her side, making no effort to conceal it, and no one even bats an eyelash at this. And then later on, when she's in the airport about to hop a flight to Paris, as she's walking through the airport, I guess she's worried that the people looking for her might recognize her, and somehow she develops the ability to change her appearance on the fly. That's apparently what higher brain function does. And while she's walking through the terminal, suddenly she changes her hair, straightens it, lengthens it, changes the color. No one notices. Crowded airport terminal in Taipei. Are people in Taiwan just normally that oblivious, or are they just used to seeing people change their hair at will and carry silenced firearms around? I've never been to Taipei. Maybe that's just normal over there. I don't know. For all I know, it could be. One of the things that really bothered me about this movie 
you know, it's, it's incredibly stupid. The premise is stupid. The story is stupid. Many of the events that go on with just how oblivious people are and this bullshit science, it's all stupid. I could kind of let that go and just suspend my disbelief if the movie wasn't trying to be smarter than it is. Just as an example, in that first act, when the douchebag is trying to convince Lucy to deliver the briefcase for her, while they're talking about this, completely out of nowhere, it cuts to a scene with a mouse walking up to a mousetrap. Because, you see, she's walking into a trap, and that's what this mouse symbolizes. It symbolizes Lucy walking into a trap, just like the mouse is walking into a trap. Those of you who are only using 10% of your brains might not have picked up on this, so we wanted to use this blatantly obvious symbolism in order to explain this. Sir, did... Did he think he was being clever with this shit? I just... I, what is even the hell? That was... Oh my god. For those of you who know who Film Brain is, and if you don't, you should check out his videos, but I could just picture him screaming, SYMBOLISM! Many times during the first few minutes of this movie, but immediately followed by his head exploding because symbolism overload. And after this, as she's captured by the mafias when... She delivers the briefcase. It cuts to some more nature reel clips with a cheetah chasing down a gazelle because, you see, she's being captured by these mafia guys, much like the cheetah is capturing the gazelle. Yeah, we fucking get it! Jesus, Luke! What the hell, man? Oi. Thankfully, it does not do this throughout the entire movie. In fact, that really, after the first 10-15 minutes or so, it never happens again. Which I'm happy for, because if that was throughout the entire movie, then I would have just written this thing off right away as the most pretentious crap I've ever seen. But, fortunately, it doesn't do that throughout the entire movie, but I have to wonder, what was even the point? Oh, and there's one more time when it does it. Uh, yeah, d while uh, Lucy is going through her uh, troubles with the gangsters, it cuts back and forth to a conference that uh, Morgan Freeman's character is giving about brain power, about that whole 10% bullshit, which, you know, he does his damnedest to try to make it sound plausible, and if it was anyone but Morgan Freeman, it probably wouldn't have worked. But, you know, he almost makes it work. Almost, mind you. And as it keeps cutting back and forth, there's this point where he talks about, you know, when animals are in a certain location, they have two basic reactions, either self-preservation or reproduction. If the environment is hostile they go with self-preservation. If it's ideal, reproduction. Cue the montage of animals fucking. I am not making that up. And it is a montage of about, like, seven or eight different species of animals, humans included, reproducing. Yeah. To, to live in Luc Besson's head for one day, I'm not sure I can handle it, but I would almost want to try it just one. I am curious how this man thinks. Be, because, wow. I, <laughs> and that's the last time those nature clips show up, but what it... Jesus. Um, also, another example of how this movie tries to be smarter than it is, it keeps throwing in this philosophical bullshit throughout the film that I'm sure sounded important to Luke at the time when he wrote the film, but in hindsight, I think the movie would have been better off without it. Um, because really, it's just... There's this... 
little spiel that Lucy goes on later in the movie after she meets up with Professor Norman, uh, who apparently doesn't have a first name unless it actually is Professor, but anyway. She goes on this little tirade about how time is the only true unit of measure, because if, if you take this image of a car driving by and you speed up the footage fast enough, eventually the car just disappears. And therefore, we can never really know if anything actually exists, because we can't detect that it exists. But we can always detect time. Time is the only universal thing we can detect. It is the only true unit of measure. First of all, bullshit. Just because you can't detect it with the naked eye doesn't mean there aren't other ways to detect it. Get some fancy schmancy cameras that can detect things moving at a higher speed. You can still prove it's there. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean something else can't. You can't see an atom with the naked eye. You can still detect them with the proper microscope. Your philosophy is stupid. And number two, really? Like, after coming up with this ridiculous-ass premise and this equally stupid-ass plot, I don't know why I'm putting ass on the end of anything, but anyway, after all that, now you're going to try to sound deep and philosophical and intelligent? No, that ship has sailed. That ship sailed long ago and sunk and is now buried at the bottom of the ocean and you will never see it again. Get off it. Ugh. And also, the, the way the movie begins and ends, the very first line you hear in the movie, a little voiceover from Lucy, Life was given to us one billion years ago. What have we done with it? And the last line in the movie, Life was given to us one billion years ago. Now you know what to do with it. Do I now? Was there a deleted scene that I missed? Because I don't... Really, what, what exactly are we supposed to do? The only thing I got out of this was kill a bunch of mob bosses and take mind-expanding drugs. I don't think that's the message you were going for, and if it was, whoa, no, <laughs> but yeah. Good stuff. Um, the actors, all the main players, do a pretty good job. I mean, Morgan Freeman, he's Morgan Freeman. He always does good work. Uh, Scarlett Johansson as Lucy, pretty good overall. Um, it's a very robotic performance as time goes on, but then again, it's supposed to be because as her brain gets more and more powerful, she starts to become less and less emotional because she just no longer feels emotions anymore. And yeah, it's probably nothing that would win her any awards, but you know, for, for what it is, she does it well. Um, Amir Waqid does a pretty good job as this police officer she meets up with. Uh, Min Sik Che does well as the mob boss. Uh, those are really the only major players in there. Also, the action scenes are a shitload of fun, especially when she starts developing all her weird telekinetic powers and just anytime someone tries to attack her, she just kind of pushes them out of the way with her mind. And there's one scene in particular that I think is in one of the trailers where all the guys are just hanging on the ceiling, just kind of stuck there as she just casually walks by them. There's also a really cool car chase in this movie, most of which takes place with her driving against the flow of traffic on a one-way street and having just a never-ending stream of narrow misses. And that, that scene was a lot of fun. I really like that. And honestly, if this movie had just stuck with being a superhero action movie and did away with all that philosophical bullshit and just accepted the fact that it was a stupid movie and let itself be a stupid B-grade science fiction movie probably would have been okay. But that, all that shit really left a foul taste in my mouth. It, it did. I... Just, it was hard to get past all that. There, there were so many times when I was just thinking, God damn it, Luke, get off it. Really. So, in the end, would I recommend this movie? Maybe as a rental, but I really wouldn't go beyond that. Because it, 
it just got way too stupid. And, I mean, recently I talked about another really stupid movie, The Purge 2, uh, which I kind of enjoyed, but I think the main difference there is The Purge 2 is a B-grade action movie, and it's really not trying to be anything more than that. At least, that's the impression I got from it. Lucy is a B-grade science fiction movie, and it's trying to be something more and just failing miserably. And that really sets it back. So, I... I mean, it's just, it's not a very good movie. And because of that, I have a hard time recommending it. Maybe... It, it does have some good points to it. Like, namely, the acting is very strong. The direction's pretty good. The action sequences are fantastic. So, you know, there, there's some stuff to like here. So I would say, if you're curious, I wouldn't waste your money seeing it on the big screen, but give it a rental when it hits DVD or video on demand. But... I can't really recommend anything beyond that. It's just, it's not worth the money. And that's about all I have to say about Lucy. So, until next time, take care.